historically that matchup should be very, very uh, lopsided in his favor. But uh, CVM does not care what your matchup percentage is. So you see David here start off with the Plains and Jeremiah with an island and a candelabra of Tanas. So this is not a matchup that I have ever seen play out. Uh, for one thing, the, the Cloud Post deck is only very recently kind of coming into its own. Uh, I, you only ever saw it in, in kind of very fringe circumstances before. So I am not really sure what we have in store here. I, I couldn't tell you with any confidence who is fav a favorite in this matchup. Yeah, it feels like it's a mixture of, you know, Jeremiah's power and how hard it is to interact with this stuff versus David's ability to disrupt his mana. Right. Uh, Phyrexian Revoker notably can't name lands. So that's going to turn off. So that that's, makes it so that Revoker can't turn off uh, things like Eye of Ugin. So you're going to see there from Jeremiah a uh, Pithy Needle. That is naming the Rashan port that you see on David's side of the table. And a Tropical Island, the passing of the turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Needle, of course, can name lands. Uh, so Shields' ability to interact with Jeremiah's mana base is significantly neutered here. So for those of you who do not really know, are not that familiar with the Cloud Post list, what's going on here is it's trying to get a bunch of copies of Cloud Post, Glimmer Post, Vesuva into play uh, to actually hard cast Eldrazi. There's a Singleton, Emrakul, a Kozilek. Those can be found through an Eye of Ugin. You have four copies of Primeval Titan, so that can search together these lands and generate a lot of mana very quickly. There's also a small show and tell package, which you can show and tell in Primeval Titan, win the game pretty easily from there. Mm -hmm. Or if you happen to draw one of your Eldrazi alongside the show and tell, you can win the game that way, much the way that Sneak and Show does. Yeah, the, the mana base of this Cloud Post deck uh, kind of hits warp speed out of nowhere. Uh, for the first couple of turns, he's just going to look like he's dirtling around, just playing some lands, playing some artifacts. Um, and then as the, uh, as the Cloud Post engine gets online, uh, the mana base kind of gets out of control. He'll go from having access to four mana a turn to suddenly having 12 and then 45 or something along those lines. So you see a sort of fire nice there from David Jeremiah just with a glimmer post in the passing of the turn. Or at least, yeah, I should say, at least, at least that's Jeremiah's game plan. Uh, Dave Shields obviously would, would have something to say about that and would be looking to interact any way he can to shut that down. And there is I believe, some question about uh, what was named, I think, with Revoker. The, that Phyrexian Revoker is turning off Candelabra of Thanos. Yeah. Candelabra, uh, Candelabra of Thanos, uh, not a, a crucial piece of the engine, uh, but a pretty significant one. Jeremiah can certainly enact his game plan without it. Yep. So you see a moment's piece here. And that's another interesting element of the Cloud Post deck. You see numbers like two Candelabra of Tanas. We associate that with being a three or four of in high tide decks. Only three copies of Show and Tell. That's a no-brainer four of in, right. in Sneak and Show lists. So there's kind of some weird backup plans the deck has access to. Yeah. You know, this deck, uh, it's not a Show and Tell deck. It just is a, is a deck that happens to be able to occasionally make very good use of Show and Tell. Likewise, it's not really a Candelabra of Thanos deck. It is a Cloud Post deck. And it does have four of that card plus something like another virtual 10 copies. Uh, it has crop rotation, um, exploration map, primeval titans, of course, to fetch out the, the Cloud Posts. So you see this attack from David with the Phyrexian Revoker being equipped with the Sword of Fire Knights, a Thalia that was added to the table last turn, and Jeremiah trying to fend these attacks off with Moments Piece. He has two copies in his main deck. And looks like Shield's going to commit more creatures to the board. Uh, there's not really any way that Jeremiah can punish him for that. Uh, there are no sweepers. There's nothing like, um, you know, like Oblivion Stone, which you sometimes see in, in the big mana decks in Modern. Um, Jeremiah can, can buy time with Moments Peace. He can actually buy quite a bit of time with Moments Peace. Uh, but he can't actually get any of these creatures off the board. So you believe, uh, so I, he played that term what I believe to be a Vesuva? Uh, I, I think that's a cloud post. That's that, a cloud that, that post? Is a, that's an FNM cloud post. Okay. FNM uh, foil promo cloud post. It's so unaware that was made into a promo. Uh, yeah, it was, it was several years ago. It was actually it was before uh, Glimmer Post was printed. Ah. So kind of didn't take off there for a while. Jeremiah, we, we, had, we mentioned earlier, we had him on camera in uh, Somerset. His Glimmer Posts have been altered uh, to kind of have the, the Mirrodin hex plate gra sure. grassland uh, that kind of makes them full art. Uh, when I saw those in Somerset, I was I was like, "Whoa, that's a that's a cool promo." Was that an FNM promo? Did they did they do that? When did they do that? It turns out he just had them altered. Okay, 
So you see another attack here from, from David's army. That's going to be hit with Moments Piece again. These Moments Piece is so good against a deck like Death and Taxes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Moments Piece, yeah, historically a, a real backbreaker against uh, aggressive decks without reach in the form of burn or something like that. So David just with an Aether Vial post-combat. All his deck can do is attack, so he just has to slog through these Moments Pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Jeremiah, of course, has the uh, the second Moments Piece still sitting in his graveyard, so that could be a, a fourth combat step that he can fog that way. He also has, or at least, let me double check that he still has it. He, uh, yeah, he has one Glacial Chasm in his main deck, uh, and he does have a, have a crop rotation in his hand. So in addition to the one turns respite he can gain with that Moments Piece, he could buy himself at least another three turns mm -hmm. with Glacial Chasm. So David untaps and draws. Jeremiah doing nothing so far except playing lands and, and fogging. Yeah, uh, and that's, that's basically the game plan. As I said, Jeremiah can't actually remove any of these permanents. He just needs to buy time uh, and get his engine online. And actually, unless... I could, be, I could be seeing it wrong, but I believe the Glacial Chasm is actually in Jeremiah's hand. Glacial Chasm, not, uh, not a card I see every day. Yep. So. So here is the crop rotation before combat here, or inside of combat here. That's getting another copy of Cloud Post. Jeremiah again paying the two mana because Thalia is in play. Okay. And actually, I just caught a glimpse of Glacial Chasm in his library, so I was wrong about that. And we're going to see another copy of Moments Piece flash back here. And that is the last Moments Piece. That, that, that is all two of them, and so all four turns of uh, a fogging action. And uh, Dave Shields has amassed a pretty significant board over these couple of turns. Yeah. Now the question is, is this lethal in one attack? Can Jer Jeremiah afford to take one hit from this army in turn to give himself a turn to advance his board and then eventually do something powerful? Uh, on board, it is it is not lethal. He can take one hit. Uh, that would be, I believe, 12 from the Mirror Crusader, uh, up to 14 from, from Thalia, and then 16 from the Phyrexian Revoker. Uh, now having said that, Shields could add a, another piece of equipment uh, and equipped to the Mirror Crusader, that would be lethal. Any other equipment that he plays would be the one hit. So here comes the Brainstorm again, floating some colorless, co actually just paying for the entire thing here. Yes, he has to pay for the tax on, on Thalia. Yeah, now I mentioned equipment could actually take this from a uh, two-turn clock to a one-turn clock. That has to happen at sorcery speed, however. Uh, Jeremiah does have access to that, cl that uh, crop, second crop rotation, so... If that were to happen, he could conjure up a Glacial Chasm and uh, buy himself the time he needs. So Jeremiah, with this Brainstorm, has found Primeval Titan alongside Show and Tell. Primeval Titan is going to accelerate things. Uh, however, Jeremiah currently only has access to one green source. He could, however, Show and Tell the Primeval Titan True. into play. True. Uh, with Primeval Titan with its alternate cost, cost of two and a blue. Mm -hmm. So Jeremiah trying to figure out how he wants to proceed here. Yeah, a lot of options. He has a repeal in his hand as well. Okay, so I, he could actually uh, repeal the Phyrexian Revoker yes. and then use his Candelabra. I believe he is at the point where he would net mana by doing that. Uh, he, it would cost him three mana to, uh, to bounce the Revoker and then two more to actually activate the Candelabra, but he would gain six. Well, it's four mana to bounce the Revoker because the Thalia's oh, yeah, in play. Oh, sure, yeah, the Thalia, okay. So the Thalia actually makes that just a break-even play unless he adds another uh, Locus to the board. On the other hand, it does get it off the board, so there's something to be said for that. So there is a repeal. And we're not clear on what it is targeting just yet. A lot of good targets on the board, actually. I imagine if he's doing it right now, we're pro he's probably going out of the Phyrexian Revoker. Yeah, I would think so. Um, it's also possible that uh, getting Thalia out of the way actually allows him to, to cast a sequence of spells as well. And Shields, not a lot of gas in hand. He actually, we do see that Stoneforge Mystic, so um, if Jeremiah lets his guard down, uh, Shields could actually Stoneforge up Anumazawa's Jite and uh, win the game in one sweep. So you see there, Candelabra is being activated for three. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> keeping track of your mana with this deck is one of the trickiest parts of it. All right. All right. So and there we now, go. Now here is show and tell. Again, Primeval Titan with the alternate cost of two and a blue. Yeah, 
And that does leave, that leaves one land untapped. Uh, we don't know if Jeremiah perhaps has some mana in his pool, but uh, just the one land on tap does not provide him the insulation he needs uh, to use crop rotation. Yeah. So that's going to be Primeval Titan versus Phyrexian Revoker. And I imagine there's no mana floating right now because he had to play the, the Cloud Post tap for three, which he, and he needed the extra mana to push through Thalia's cause. Mm -hmm. Extra tax on it. Okay. So kind of exposing himself here. Um, Shields can clear away the Primeval Titan with Swords to Plowshares. However, the, the six life does make a difference there in terms of uh, how that changes the clock. At least I think it does. Not only the six damage, but uh, just the two lands from Primeval Titan may be enough to set up a kill next turn. That is true. Uh, set up a kill next turn, and actually he can gain some life with it as well. Um, he could fetch up some Glimmer Posts. Uh, if you fetch two Glimmer Posts, that's uh, ten life that he would gain, which is more than enough to put himself out of range. So the Frexian Revoker that David put into play off of the show and tell, that is naming Candelabra once again. Sure. Uh, I think we, we suspected that as much. Uh, there's really not another good card to name in this matchup. Uh, he, he does have Expedition Map, but of course, we, if you're Shields, you have to assume that he would have played one of those by now if he had it. Uh, but he, he also does have Four Senses, Divining Top. Um, so I guess, I guess those are reasonable cards to name, although in both cases, um, if Jeremiah had drawn one this game, it would be in play already. So, Jeremiah really thinking about what's the second land here he wants to go get. And it looks like he's settling on two copies of Cloud Post. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th I mean, this is a tricky spot. Um, normally, you can, you, you don't have to lead on Cloud Post quite so heavily because you have access to Candelabra. Uh, but in this case, the, with the Candelabra turned off, you actually need all four of your Cloud Posts and actually, in order to make the mana necessary. Uh, you also have to worry about Wasteland. Uh, if you, Ration out just enough mana, you know, say you, you, you get a, a Cloud Post and a Glimmer Post to give yourself a little bit of a life buffer. Um, and then, so you, you figure out you need, you're going to have exactly this much mana. Um, and then Wasteland comes along. Mm -hmm. Wasteland just completely disrupts that. Jeremiah kind of giving him, uh, giving himself more mana than he needs, I think. Uh, those, those Cloud Posts tap for five mana each. So he's going to untap with 24 mana, I believe. Well, he may need it to be able to crop rotate for Eye of Ugin sure. and have enough mana to get Emrakul and Cast in the same turn. Right, and he could do that. So you're going to see the, David's going to take care of that Titan with the Source of Plot Share at the end of Jeremiah's turn, and that's going to set Jeremiah up to 25. Okay. Vial goes up to 2. And this is going to be a close one. Um, actually, that, that Avid Mind Sensor complicates things even further. A huge draw for David right there, Avid Mind Sensor. That's going to break up a lot of what Jeremiah tries to do next turn. Mm -hmm. Uh, Shields can vial in Stoneforge Mystic, uh, fetch up Batter Skull or Umazawa's Jite. Umazawa's Jite was the only one he could actually cast and equip. Uh, that would have given this attack an extra four damage, but that would have only done 20. Okay, so there's a big hit here from David coming across. Mm. Gets to draw two cards in addition to uh, dealing a huge swath of damage. So that is two, four, six, Eight, ten, and then a double strike trigger, which is another two, four, six. So sixteen coming across by my count. Yes. That's going to take Jeremiah down to nine. Sixteen, uh, twelve combat damage, four damage worth of sort of fire and ice triggers, um, and two fresh cards. Uh, of course, did not need the cards. Has that uh, the 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 Aven Mind Sensor there, which. That's going to not turn off exactly, but more or less turn off the crop rotation that Jeremiah is banking on. Yeah. And if that crop rotation is intended to get Eye of Ugin, then Ava Mind Sensor is good even in that spot. So. Yeah, that's true. Uh, this would be a fantastic moment. I would, I would love to see. And actually, oh, he yeah, just yeah, drew that, the Emrakul. Okay. Never mind. Yeah, no worries. It had it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a hard cast Emrakul. Okay. Well, that simplifies things. And again, this is a hard cast. This isn't through show and tell. So that Caracas provides David no defense. Yeah. I was really hoping to see him actually crop rotation, mind sensor come down, find it on find it in the top four, find Eye of Ugin, activate it, find Emrakul in the top four. I wanted to see some fireworks. I guess I'm seeing fireworks anyway. And so Jeremiah announces the trigger. He's going to untap and draw. Mm -hmm. Dave Shields does have a Caracas, but that doesn't really help you no. against, mm -hmm. uh, against an Emrakul that can simply be re-hardcast. Yeah, in theory, Caracas plus 
uh, Emrakul is something Jeremiah's deck is trying to do. True. Yeah, Jeremiah <laughs> does have a Caracas of his own. Uh, so after this attack, he, we may actually see him go for that to try and set up an infinite turn loop. Uh, now, Shields can interact with that. Yeah. All right, second Pithic Needle coming down for Jeremiah. This one naming Aether Vial. So just doesn't want any surprises. Yeah. Of course, is he is going to get a surprise in the form of even Mind Sensor, uh, with or without that Pithic Needle. So here's an attack that's going to be an Emrakul trigger. All right, so Shields can, can actually sack enough, some amount of lands, but uh, keep around enough to cast even Mind Sensor. Uh, if he does that, he would have to give up two of his other permanents. Uh, there's no harm, really, in giving up that Aether Vial. It's been turned off. But he actually wants to hold on to all of his creatures at this point. So we'll see momentarily. Imagine David's going to lose some of his mana here. He's still attacking for lethal on board. Yeah. Pretty, uh, pretty complicated decision here. A lot of, a lot of things to consider. It's interesting that Shields did not activate his needle, or sorry, activate his vial in response to needle. Uh, that would have given him an additional permanent that he could afford to sacrifice. Of course, the, the way that the way that happens, you don't actually know what has been named until it's too late. Yeah. So he might have been assuming that, uh, that I don't know, sort of fire and ice, perhaps, or Caracas was yeah. going to be named. Right. So David here trying to figure out how he wants to sacrifice. It looks like he's going to lose his vial. At least two of his lands. Mm -hmm. That's, I have to assume, yeah, Four. okay. He's going to sacrifice that Flagstones of Trocair as well, which yeah. is is going to leave him with an extra land, although he won't be able to use it this turn. So you see him sack his six permanents there, the Thalia, his vial four lands, one of which was the Flagstones, the planes he's searching up through, through the Flagstones. Mm -hmm. And this could be a spooky turn. Uh, for Jeremiah, yeah, he's, he's going to go for that, that crop rotation. We have to assume he is looking for the Caracas to bounce his own Emrakul and recast it. And Shields is going to say no. All right, so crop rotation trying to go for the win here, finding the Emra trying to find Caracas for the lock. Here's an even mind sensor, and so... And if this, if this whiffs, if Jeremiah has no further play, uh, Shields has lethal on the crackback. Yeah. So does not find a land, looks like. Does not find it, and... and picks it up. Dave Shields able to hold on just long enough and take the first game. Wow. Yeah, that, that Avon Mind Sensor was huge. The last piece of the disruption puzzle. Yeah. So moving on to the sideboard there, you got David's death and taxes list in front of you. What's he bringing in? He is going to bring in likely uh, his one pithing needle. He has a lot of one ofs. Uh, he has one pithing needle, one graft digger's cage, one batter skull, one sun lance, one Manriki Gusari, one ghost quarter, one oblivion ring, and then two ether sworn cannonists, two rest in peace. Two Cataclysm and two Wiltleaf Leech. Uh, I don't see a lot of real game breakers in the sideboard, uh, but I do see some, some kind of fine tuning points that would help him out. Uh, I would expect him to bring in the Pithing Needle, the Ghost Quarter, and likely the Oblivion Ring. Okay. Uh, the Oblivion Ring is a good insurance against a uh, show and tell, and it's just broad removal that can be used to turn off something like a Candelabra of Thanos. All right, on Rudolph's side, we got three Migrate Trap, three Swan Swan, two Karn Liberated, three Phyrexian Revoker, two Grozan Grip, two Ensnaring Bridge. Probably like Ensnaring Bridge in this matchup. Yes. Uh, we actually, we saw him in Somerset bring in Ensnaring Bridge against a Bant deck that actually interacts kind of on, on a pretty similar plane, I think. Um, and Ensnaring Bridge did a lot of work there. I expect it to do a lot of work here. Uh, Shields is going to have actually only the one Oblivion Ring would be his only answer. Uh, and that's assuming he even brings it in. So, yeah, if, if, uh, if Ensnaring Bridge hits the board, it's game over. Well, I said that. There are actually three Flicker Wisps as well. So uh, he could buy himself a turn, and it could be a crucial turn. So not actually completely lights out, but uh, very significant. And... Hmm. What do you think about Revoker uh, in the matchup? Yeah, yeah, I was actually wondering that. I'm not really sure. D David's got some targets for Revoker. But they're not really what you would call essential pieces. No, they're not. They uh, Really, what, what Jeremiah cares about is uh, having his mana disrupted. He, he wants to develop his mana base uh, kind of at his own leisure and not uh, have to worry about what Shields is doing, uh, in, whether it be Wasteland or Rishon Port. Um, and Port. Re Frankly, Revoker, of course, cannot turn, name lands, so uh, Revoker doesn't help him there. Uh, Revoker can turn off Aether Vial, 
uh, which is something we actually saw him do. Uh, that's good, but it's not great. Some pieces of equipment. Sure. There's a couple of things, but the Revoker's body, not really significant in against a deck like Death No, Texas. not at all. Um, I don't think I want them in this matchup. Uh, he has actually one in the main deck. I would probably board it out as well. So moving on to game two momentarily. Again, Jeremiah there with that top deck Emrakul. Looked like he had a chance to, to win that first game, but just whiffed on that crop rotation because of Avon Mind Sensor. See two Karn liberated there in Jeremiah's sideboard. Uh, that's a card. I know if Cedric were here in the booth, he'd be losing his mind over that Karn. But uh, I, I'm not sure where you want a Karn. You know, that doesn't feel like a sideboard card. I think Karn is for matchups where, you know, they're going to be taxing your mana some, some amount, but it is, again, some decks just as good as Emrakul. It's oh. effectively game over. That's fair. And it's seven mana instead of 15. That's, okay, that's fair. Uh, I mean, this is certainly a matchup where uh, Karn probably ends the game. I saw him bring it against Bug, for example, and it was just, it was as good as Emrakul. Okay. Game, game is basically over. All right, fair. So do you think he brings it in here? Uh, I don't know. D David can actually attack Planeswalkers. That's true. I know that, that Karn is pretty tough to attack down, but in the matchups where I saw Jeremiah put Karn to good use, it was one of those matches where he could play it, minus it, remove the only attacker and play, and then take the game over from there. Okay. Less, you know, Jeremiah probably has to play Karn and plus it against a, death like de a deck like Death and Taxes. So that's fair. All right. Uh, I'm kind of looking over both players' sideboards, trying to look at some uh, some more obscure uses. Uh, I saw Karn. I was a little curious about that. There, there are two Ether Sworn Canonists in in Dave Shields' sideboard. That's a card that it, it's not. Uh, obviously, this is not a Storm deck in any significant sense. Uh, it's not a deck that necessarily needs to play multiple spells in one turn. Uh, but the turn that the Jeremiah kind of quote unquote goes off, uh, it is totally feasible that he would need to chain crop rotations or uh, chain like a crop rotation into a repeal on a candelabra or something like that. Uh, I think there, there's a real argument for maybe just bringing those in, mostly as grizzly bears, uh, with some slight upside as well. Just depends what the cost is of the cards you're taking out. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, there are a lot. Mother of Runes in particular doesn't really do anything in this matchup. Jeremiah um, is not that interested in attacking or blocking or using removal spells. No. Um, so I think Dave will be actively looking for reasons to cut all four of his Mother, rune, mother of Runes. Um, yeah, other than that, Ethers from Canada is probably not better than any of his other creatures. Uh, maybe Sarah Avenger. So, yep. Uh, David keeps his seven, and Jeremiah going down to six. Sarah Avenger does feel a little slow for this matchup. Sure. Uh, Sarah Avenger is, yeah, it, it's slow in most matchups, naturally, but uh, where it really shines are uh, in matchups where its evasion matters or where the fact that it has three toughness uh, and can therefore get around things like Pyroclasm or even something like Golgari Charm. Mm -hmm. uh, the, it's big in those situations. This is neither of those situations. So. Yeah, David needs to cast his stuff on time. Yes. Uh, so Sarah Avenger, of course, it's a body it beats, uh, but it's really not, not a card he would ever be excited to see. And taking a peek at, he eh, doesn't like that one either. And these mulligans are really tough on a deck like Jeremiah's. It's hard for him to get kind of his critical mass of stuff mm -hmm. when he's going back. Yeah, uh, this is not really a deck where the cards are interchangeable. Yeah. Uh, there are, you sometimes hear people refer to decks as, uh, you know, this deck mulligans well, or this deck doesn't mulligan very well. Uh, that can mean any number of things, but most usually what, what it means is this is a deck that uh, either needs all of its material, uh, in the case of, you know, for example, a deck like Storm actually just has to cast a certain number of spells in order to win the game, uh, or it is a deck that actually has to cast one spell in particular and just needs seven looks to find it rather than five. Yeah. Although Jeremiah can still win with uh, show and tell, even from a pretty low base. That is true. So, uh, yeah, just show and tell, primeval titan, go nuts. That's, yeah. a, that's still a real thing he can do. Uh, of course, that's that, that's not a start that Shields is completely defenseless against either. And shrugs and says, "Okay, it looks like." And <laughs> we see Karak a Caracas of his own for Jeremiah. That would be what he was looking for last game. So the turn one pithy needle from Cloudpost, as it often does, naming wasteland. Yeah, this is not a deck that is happy to be wastelanded. Most decks aren't. But, but this one especially yes. so. This one in particular, uh, the most powerful thing that it is doing can be disrupted by Wasteland. And a Plains and an Aether Vial from Dave. Expedition map and no second land from Jeremiah. Yeah, and that's rough. Uh, 
it does it it does mean that he can wiggle out of it. Like he doesn't need to find several lands in a row. He actually, I mean, he kind of still does, but the second land will find him the third at this stage. So a little room to breathe there. Uh, obviously, still needs to draw out of his current predicament. And actually, it looks like Shields is missing his second land as well. Uh, you see, I believe he has there a Caracas okay. and a, so a tucked, Flagstone. Tucked away at the back there. He does have a Needle that he could potentially put on this Expedition map. Yeah, and I'm inclined to make that play here, actually. It's, it's hard to do. Uh, you know, there are... You, you want to get on board quickly, you want to apply pressure, and your two drops are really where the pressure starts. Okay, it looks like he is going to fire off that Needle. And that Needle, David, given a point to Expedition map, And just sends it back. And so. Emeril Cool to draw for Jeremiah. <laughs> That's what you need when you're stuck on one land. <laughs> the old 15 coster? Yeah. Looks like Shields did keep at least uh, some of his mother of runes there. Uh, and now, now that that vial is on two, we're really going to see him start to go nuts here. Uh, basically, vial at its best in this in, in this game is really demonstrating why Vile is a card that continues to see play, see play and kind of be an archetype into itself in Legacy. Just so, the ability to cast two things a turn. Yep. So Mother of Runes attacks. Goes quarter the draw for David here. Vile sent to two, and a lot of two costers, a lot of resources to work with. Mm -hmm. Dave's going to play his Ghost Quarter here. And that, that is a fantastic Ghost Quarter. Uh, Jeremiah does have some basic lands, but they are, they're not the ones he wants. And, uh, like... I, you know, Shields is not in a hurry to activate that Ghost Quarter, but if this game progresses even to the point where Jeremiah can start to get back into it, the Ghost Quarter could shut him back out. So there is a Stoneforge Mystic. That's going to find Sword of Fire Ice. Aether Vial set to two. That's going to be activated by David. Looks like he's putting Thali into play and really starting to constrain Jeremiah's mana. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> Koza like the draw for Jeremiah. <laughs> That's pretty good. Those are powerful cards. <laughs> All right. This would be a good show and tell if it ever comes along. The, the first Eldrazi is insulting enough in this yeah. scenario. Does it, do we really need the second one? <laughs> yeah, your, your deck is just sassing you at that point. Yeah. And our backup feature match, Feline Longmore, and wins. She is now 6-1. and one. Sniffing distance of top eight. Yep. And Dave, really in full control of this game. Now Stoneforge missing in the... Sword, Sword goes on Mother of Runes. Jeremiah's going to bounce the Thalia with the Caracas, but Dave's still coming across for five points of damage. Yeah, the, the Caracas Thalia interaction is a little peculiar. Uh, you know, you, you basically port down a Caracas every turn by putting Thalia back into play, but spend more mana than you would like it to do that. So Jeremiah with no play. Dave with an und at the end of the turn, Vials and Sarah Avenger. Yeah, Jeremiah is still stuck on one land, so uh, Talia not so important. Dave would just rather get some extra pressure in, in the form of Sarah Avenger. And so. here's attack for okay. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points of damage after the sword trigger. So lethal in one more turn. Yep, no permanence, no land. Well, some that, permanence, but that needle that needle is set to wasteland, but doesn't really matter too much. Jeremiah going to tap his mulligan to five. Did not give him nearly enough resources to work with. And Dave Shields advances to six and one. Also now within striking distance of the top eight with death and taxes. Yeah, this is, uh, this is shaping up to be a spicy top eight. And that was a great demonstration of what death and taxes is capable of. If you look at the deck on, decks on paper, it doesn't look like Dave has many routes of interaction. And he has to slog through multiple main deck re moments pieces as well. But somehow he's able to put just enough pressure and keep Jeremiah off his footing just enough to steal the games. <laughs>